So we spent some time working on a lot of x86 type concepts and I want to start to actually build a project with x86. So we're going to be taking a look at building a really simple operating system. It's really going to be like a toy example of an operating system that's going to take you from building a bootloader to some really basic operating system fundamentals and functionality using things like x86 as well as probably a little bit of C as we continue building on this project. So we're starting this off by discussing the idea of bootloaders. What a bootloader really does is it's a program that's responsible for booting a computer. And in this video, we're gonna create a really simple bootloader. So I've got a simple structure for my operating system. I have a parent folder containing all of the different files for my operating system. I have a build folder, which is where all my build files are going to be. I'll delete these ones. These were just from me uh, playing around. So this folder will be empty when you start. We're gonna have a source file, which is gonna have this main.asm file in it. This will contain our bootloader code. And we're gonna create a make file as well, and I'll show you how to build this as we continue on through this project. So before we get into the actual building of our x86 bootloader, I wanna talk a little bit about how do we actually boot a computer? How do we boot an operating system? Well, when your computer first boots, it enters what's known as BIOS, the basic input output system. And BIOS contains a whole bunch of different utilities and tools that allow the operating system to perform you know, hardware initializations during startup. In the legacy booting formats, the BIOS is going to search for the operating system on the disk and start the booting process. So what it generally does is it takes each of the bootable devices and it loads them into memory at a location, which is actually the location 0x, uh, let me write it out here, 0x7c00. And this memory location, it's gonna load the uh, first segment of disk into it, and it's gonna check for a special signature. And that signature that it's looking for is a 0xAA55. If it sees this signature, what it will do is it will start executing from the start of that data segment, and it will start just running the code that's found inside of there. So in order to get our code running as a bootloader, we need to be able to write this signature at the specified location where this is starting up, which is this location here. So let's take a look at how we would do that. This will allow us to introduce a few interesting commands that we haven't really seen so far talking about assembly programming. So the first command that we're gonna see is this org command. And what the org command basically does is it tells the assembler that we should do all of our addressing relative to this address. The reason why we do that is because of course, since the uh, BIOS is going to load everything at this address, we wanna make sure everything is relative to that address so that it's placed in the right location for BIOS to be able to find the data. The second thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set the number of bits for our operating system so far to 16. Now this is kind of interesting. Basically, when your computer boots, generally every x86 based processor or even 64 bit processor starts in a 16 bit mode. And this is for backwards compatibility reasons. So what happens is we start in 16 bits and then we do our initial processing, we get things set up, and then we can move over into 32 or 64 bits once we get everything up and running. So to start, we start at 16 bits. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a simple little function here called main, the entry point of our code. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna have this instruction HLT or halt. The halt instruction is basically going to pause the CPU. And it's gonna pause it generally until it reaches a particular type of interrupt that occurs on the system. And when this happens, it will resume execution. Now we don't want the system to actually resume execution. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get the operating system to just boot up and then stop. So if this halt somehow gets bypassed, you know, if the specific interrupt it's waiting for comes in and it actually continues to execute, then what we need to do is we need to make sure that the execution doesn't go anywhere else. So the way that we could do that is we can set up this halt label and it's just gonna to jump to itself. So it's creating basically just an infinite loop where it's just gonna to continue to loop here over and over and over again. So that's all our operating system is gonna do. It's gonna boot, it's just gonna freeze, it's gonna do nothing. And you'll see what that looks like when we actually boot this on disk. Now the important part here is that we need to write that signature at the end of this program. So the way that we do that is first off, we have to get to the end of our program. Now, the way that I'm writing this operating system is I'm going to assume that every block of uh, data on my disk that I'm booting from is 512 megabytes. This is mimicking like a really simple floppy drive, which generally has like 1.33 megabytes, I think, and each block is 512 in size. 
So to get to the end of it, what we have to do is we have to get to the last two bytes and then we have to place in this zero AA55 value in those bytes. So to get to the last two bytes, what we do is we do the times operation. What the times operation does is it repeats the thing that I'm going to say a specific number of times. The number of times that we're gonna repeat it is gonna be 510 minus dollar sign minus dollar sign dollar sign. This may seem a little weird. So what this is doing is this right here is going to tell us how many bytes our program currently takes up. So basically this tells us how many bytes all of this takes up. We take 510 minus that value because that will give us enough bytes that will get us up to the location at 510 in memory. That's generally what this code is doing. Now in terms of what we're going to do that number of times, well, we're just gonna write zeros. So we're just gonna write a whole bunch of zeros until we get up to byte number 510. Once we get there, we define a word and that word is going to be the signature that we want to write, which is this value right here. So this is gonna write the last two bytes to be equal to the signature that the BIOS is searching for. And at this point, you now have a working uh, bootloader in the simplest sort of form. Now to get this actually up and running, we need to be able to build this program. So I'm gonna create a make file to make this easy and replicatable. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna set up some variables up here. So we'll have one for our assembler, which we're using NASM. We're gonna set up one for our source directory, which will be SRC. That's where all of our source code is currently located. And then we're gonna have our build directory, which is gonna be, of course, where all of the build files should be. So we're gonna place those in build, this directory right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, we're gonna take this build directory and we're going to make a rule for it for creating main.image. And it's going to require, in order for this to succeed, a main.bin file. And that's the file that's gonna be created by assembling this main.asm file. Generally what this is gonna do is it's gonna copy the contents of the build directory slash main.bin. It's gonna copy that into this location, builder slash main.img. Okay, so that's where it's going to copy that into. And then just to make the disk full, to get it to that 1.44 megabytes of size that we would need for it to be a valid disk, what we do is we do a truncate command with a hyphen S, 1440k and we write this into that builder slash main.img. So that's how we actually build the image that we're looking to build. Now to actually get the, uh, the bin file that's associated with our main.asm, what we do is we do the following. We'll say builder slash main.bin. This is what we're trying to create, right? And we're doing this based on the source dir uh, main.asm, right, just like this. Now, what we're gonna do is we're simply just going to build this using this asm command. So we're gonna say asm, we're gonna say source dir slash main.asm hyphen f bin hyphen o dollar sign build underscore dir slash main.bin. So what this is really doing here is it's creating a bin file and it's creating that out of main.asm and it's placing it in the build directory. With this, we have our make file now defined. And what I'll do here is I'm just gonna make this that it word wraps, just that way it, it's more you know, easy to see the actual code here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna try making this and see if it actually works. So we should just be able to run make. And as you can see, it seems like everything ran successfully. And now to actually try to boot this disk image, we can use something like, uh, you know, any sort of emulator that may have QEMU is a good one to use. So we're gonna use QEMU. We're gonna use a system I386, it's a 32-bit system. Hyphen FDA is gonna point towards our image build slash main.img. When we do this, you see that it boots and it just stops. But you see that it actually started booting from that floppy disk that we created. And it's just sitting and waiting now. With this, you now have a very, very basic bootloader. So with this foundation, we could start to build more and more interesting things. So what we'll do is in the next video, I'll show you how we can actually print a message in the BIOS, which will get you familiar with some new types of interrupts, ones beyond the interrupt ADH that we've seen so much in x86 assembly so far. So thanks so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.